Hi, Scott. Hey, Nate. What's going on there? <laughs> I got a digital whiteboard for, uh, not Christmas. I bought it myself, but... <laughs> <laughs> I call it Christmas. I full nerd out is I'm going to try it this nice. podcast to see if uh if it's a, if it actually does. So does the camera hit it? Yeah. That one? Yeah. Hey, okay. you get that. So it, those of you who are listening on audio, you will miss my drawings. Oh, you got a good rumble. 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 Yeah. Everybody should be on Rumble. Everybody who loves Jesus and patriotism and conservative and uh, is not for uh, flat earth or whatever. Uh, no, for flat rumble. earth. Uh, does rumble have flat earth? So many flat earth, oh, man. Well, but I, I, I have my genre of rumble. It is, it's one it. of my, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, secret. You just, you can't help but like, dive into that. Yeah, I, love, I here's yeah I love when you need some good comedy. <laughs> I, here's the thing I love the, especially the ones who are more oriented towards science. I'm like science does this, and they have like always they always have beady eyes like, um, the curvature of the Earth and divided by the percentage of the degree of the. And it's, anyways, um, okay, got to start off with. Our standard. Um, I killed my kids answer. during the holidays because I had so many Christmas dad jokes in my mind, and they just were like done with me. <laughs> <laughs> I ooh, the uh, so when we did the Wednesday Night Live dad joke thing, mm -hmm. uh, you know the couple that won like three. Yeah, I, guess. I was up with that. So they were, <laughs> you were the prize giver. You I cheated know. for this. <laughs> they were. They came to our. Uh, they came to our life group <laughs> and, and I go, Hey, are you guys coming back to Wednesday Night Live? We don't have any more presents for you. <laughs> Not until May. We'll have yeah, presents yeah. in May. Uh, okay. So, um, oh, I recently purchased a thesaurus. Not only was it terrible, but it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. <clears throat> I don't care how busy you are. If you feed your kids frozen chicken nuggets or TV dinners, you're a horrible, neglectful parent. Don't you know that you're supposed to cook them first? <laughs> you're I a TV dinner fan. I am. A sirloin <laughs> steak? <sighs> a Salisbury steak. Salisbury steak, yeah. With the tater tots yeah. and then the... No, not tater tots. The mashed potatoes oh. with the corn and then the dessert is the apple pie. Apple thing. Apple, yeah. I don't know if you can call it a pie. But Listen, it is what it is. Uh, there's a guy named Bob. Bob has no arms. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not Bob. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he's hitting his head. <laughs> uh, okay, last, last one. Uh, oh, ah, uh, Will. Torns? This is from Will Torns. Oh, nice. He always sent it in. He, if we had our prizes yet, he would win one. He would win. We haven't made him yet, so he doesn't count. You know how you can tell diarrhea is hereditary? Runs in the family. <gasps> Runs in the genes. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Will. <laughs> oh, Will. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, wait, one more. I just saw that I have a, I have a whole list. <laughs> okay, well, last one. Last one. I gotta save some. Swimming with dolphins is expensive, but nothing compared to swimming with sharks. Sharks. That cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> there we go. Okay, done. Welcome to Shoot the Breeze, a podcast that celebrates the messiness of life, relationships, and Christianity, featuring my wife Lacey and myself, Nathan. It's creatively titled because it will be just us shooting the breeze, uh, sometimes with guests, while occasionally saying something important. We hope you enjoy. Uh, welcome to what? Are, what are we doing? Uh, shoot the breeze. Shoot the I was breeze. gonna say coaching with cultivation. STB. STB. Shoot. Uh, shoot the breeze. Uh, Bible school edition. BSE. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the BS edition. The, yes. Yes. Only slightly. Um. What were you gonna say? What were you gonna ask? Why do we call it Bible School Edition? Just because we're diving into a yeah, we just do a Bible book of the nerdy Bible nerdy okay. stuff. Yeah, okay. we take we take what was it before Bible School Edition? We didn't do one. 
Not me. Lacey just but, talked. Uh, no, we just talked. So we have like Lacey I didn't know if y'all had like editions or anything. No. Well, we had like titles and like sometimes we would do a series of like mm-hmm. um like on forgiveness or something like that. Okay. But the reason I want like within Shoot the Breeze, this Bible school edition, is we d- get more nerdy. Mm-hmm. And Lacey didn't want to get nerdy. She's like, Nate, we gotta keep it. Yeah. Shoot the breeze. And I'm like, but I also want to be nerdy. And so this is my compromise. Same. And it gives us something to do for Wednesday right. night. And if people are in the Hill Country and want to yeah. like see it live and mm-hmm. then get the nerdy extras, mm-hmm. they can. Or just move to the Hill Country because it's a good place to live. And then they can yeah. do that too. And we try not to get in the weeds on, on Wednesday nights. So right. Podcast is the way to get in the weeds. Right. And we take, yeah, so we take biblical subjects, Christian, uh, Christian stuff, and uh, give it a... Uh, pastoral and like ministry leadership perspective and and mm-hmm. especially those who are in ministry kind of help uh, encourage them in that way. So cool. this series, we have a five week series yeah on first John. And it's actually first through third John because we're gonna I'm I think I want to tie in those other two books mm-hmm. which <clears throat> so this brings me it just, just makes you excited, huh yeah, dude. <laughs> I I was telling someone. when nerds get excited. <laughs> oh, we didn't do that. We didn't do our. Uh... Oh, today on STB BSE, when nerds get excited, I'm about ready to knock my own socks off. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually telling a friend uh, recently. I'm like, man, I have like so many different passions. I'm passionate about seeing people walk in freedom, and and just like. The Holy Spirit move in their heart and life and they're set free. And I love Greek words. Like I love nerding out to and I go, I go, I wish I, yeah, I was like, I wish I could like pick one. But I love them both. <laughs> so, anyways. Um uh yeah, so we're gonna be doing one, two, and three, John. Uh okay. So I was studying this and I had done a series which is available um on our website and rumble, um, on First John, and I've updated some of the details in it, but mm-hmm. I mean the the principles, the the theology yeah. behind it are, are, is all the same. Um, but doing more research because I didn't want to just take my notes from then. Right. I, I enjoy learning, so I, you know, <laughs> doing that. And I discovered something like a connection between First, Second, and Third John. So I'm going to draw it out. I got a new with this. Oh, nice. Yes, that's a good drawing. Yeah, thank you. No, I was talking about that. (laughs) Here we go. All right. So we have the three books of, uh, let's see here, one. Yes. This is working. Not John's. It's just John. (laughs) There we go. Um, Okay, so you have the first book of John. Let's see here. Which is one. Uh, This one's written to the church, a church. Likely around the Ephesian area. So you look at the main area where John had his um, influence was like around the Asia Minor area. Mm -hmm. So you look at the letter of Revelation. It's written to seven churches. So that was like his primary influence. Right. So it's one of those churches, a a local house church in that area. Mm -hmm. Um, Some scholars believe like likely in Ephesus, but he had other influence. Um, That's the her that he mentioned? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in First John, it's just written to a church, mm-hmm. um, and it's like a sermon that the person <laughs> at that church, the lead pastor at that church, was supposed to preach to the church. Okay. So he writes it, and it's not a linear. That's the thing. It's not linear. It's like, woo. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is it? The cla- like. So if linear is this way, um, the classic. What is it? Irish discussion kind of does this thing, right? Yeah. Um, or I've I've seen it. Over there. Yeah, right. If it's Irish, <laughs> it ends up over there. Well, I've seen it like so. You have like the main subjects of First John: uh, love, truth, and um, um, uh, oh, what is it? Love, truth, and I have it in my notes. These notes. <clears throat> Um, it's something. Oh, light. That's what it was. So he references that. So like John's letter is not linear. It doesn't go like, uh, you get this. You have truth and then you get love and then you're walking in light. It doesn't yeah, do that. It doesn't do this. It does like this. Woo. <laughs> 
Thank you, John. But then he keeps doing that all, right. all through. Um, okay, so the second letter then, what's interesting is the second letter is written to the pastor. And he's telling the pastor, hey, do not let the people who, are, who I preached against in my first letter, mm -hmm. do not let them into the church. They're going to cause havoc. They're going to cause mm -hmm. disunity. And so it's a, it's a warning. Mm -hmm. um, don't do it. Stop. Well, then what happens is we get to his third letter, and he's writing to a, a member of the, of the house church, mm -hmm. likely the host, but a member. And he goes, uh, he says, hey, great job. You're doing exactly what I wrote about. In fact, so in verse, so in uh, the third letter, he says, I wrote something to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first among them, does not accept what I say. So likely either this letter or this letter, and maybe Diotrephes was the pastor that he wrote second mm -hmm. John to. The third one, he's like, hey, uh, that guy is not doing well. So I'm just going to put host here. And he says, uh, don't do what he's doing. <laughs> you keep doing what you're doing. Good job. In fact, we may, I, if I come, I'm going to deal with him. You don't worry about it. And so anyways, it was like this neat linear yeah. progression of these three letters where I was like, oh, I thought there were three completely separate letters. But the way um, one of the commentators I was reading, I'm like, no, this makes it real. Right. Like we have 1 Corinthians from Paul who addresses an internal church issue. Right. And then 2 Corinthians, which kind of is a follow-up to it, right? Mm -hmm. But then you see, you you potentially see it here in 1st, 2nd, 3rd yeah. John, which is so cool. Like it just, <laughs> it made it, I don't know. I was telling, and, uh, what I love is it yeah. makes it so real. So relevant relationally, like we go through stuff. Yeah, life happens. People aren't perfect. It's not a it's not a, a checklist of uh, hey do all these things mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know it's like hey this and then like you need to do this and then he didn't do that or somebody's not doing that so do you continue to do this but don't worry about that you know and it's that's life we have that kind of stuff relationships are messy to me like I grew up in the church you grew up in the church we grew up in the church. And it it got so sterile, like reading the Bible, where it's like, burp, burp, I have Bible verses, burp, mm -hmm. burp, right? And I was actually telling Lacey this this morning, this this whole thing. And her her question to me always is, oh, why does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> the Bible, you know. <laughs> I, and I told her, I'm like, no, the reason this matters to me is it <clears throat> makes... It, it, it reveals the messiness of the early church mm -hmm. that we think were so many years removed. They had it all together back then, and we've been yeah. so messed up. And it's like, no, they dealt with the exact same issues we deal with right. in a very real way. Yeah, and how closely connected time-wise to Jesus they were. I mean, they... Well, thir the guy writing them high out. five Jesus yeah. right? for a living. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you're like you're like 30 years out from Jesus. Right. So it is a, a a good solid time, but it's it's that's the thing is it I mean even within the disciples as they're with Jesus. Right. Yeah, that's a mess. Hey Jesus, who's who's better? Can we sit at your right hand or can <laughs> can we can we incinerate them? They mocked us. Right. That was John. That was John. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I don't know these like re looking into that. And then mm -hmm. even that verse in third John where it's like, Hey, I I've already written a letter to the pastor. Right. You keep doing what you're doing. Great job. And yeah, I'll take care that's of That's good. Anyways, that was, that was the epiphany I had recently <laughs> of, oh, and how they tie together. Mm -hmm. So you have this theological sermon, number one, the, the one letter, and then the personal encouragement to the pastor of, Hey man, I wrote you, you know, let, make sure we do this. And then the third one, like, hey, Dodo Pastor's not doing it. Good job doing it. Yeah. It's funny. Um, all right. So author is John, written likely 64 to 66, which is right in the first couple years of Nero's persecution of the Christians. Mm -hmm. um, and what's interesting is it was Nero's Jewish counselors that encouraged him to blame the fire um, in Rome on the Christians. Because hmm. the Jewish counselors are like, we hate Christianity. Let's blame it on them. <laughs> Nero, it'll give you an out politically. Yeah. And so it was like a win-win. 
Um, anyways, because of the anonymity, right? He he never says it's from John, and outside of using the right. the the popular name Gaius in um, um, Third John, right? He doesn't really mention locations. He doesn't mention that, and I and likely scholars are 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 agree likely um that's because it was during a time of persecution and you didn't want to name drop where a church was at right (laughs) um and so uh likely written 60 62 64 or 64 to 66 sorry and the whole backdrop of this like if we're watching a play Mm -hmm. um if the letter is a is the play the whole backdrop is gnosticism this early and we talked about this we don't have to get into the weeds of that but like the the um, Gnosticism, this early Jewish Christian um, sect, uh, right. kind of was the backdrop of it. So yeah, that was that's my intro to the books. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, so I mean, we're gonna get into it, but <clears throat> the the thing that pops out to me the most is, okay, I think I I could I don't remember what I counted, but fifteen to twenty times he mentions, in essence, you can live free from sin. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> do not. Hypothetically, not, not not forgiven from sin, which he yeah. does mention that, but like, he says sinless, yep. free from sin, whatever. Yep. So, f- fifteen to twenty times are mentioned in there. Yeah, I, I know we're gonna get to, it, but what you're, dude, I you're mean, speaking my love language right now. <laughs> yeah, so I I think that's a good like to to go into the whole thing. Going, wait a minute, it's if you mention it that many times, my guess is that's the point. Well, of Scott, so much of it is. I think it's you know it has to be hypothetical because we know that we can't be sin free. Thank you, Mister Religion. Um, but yeah, no, I mean that's I what know. we've been taught, right? I know, but like he says, and it's like if I just take it at face value, I'm like, okay, what does that mean? I know we're going to spend yeah. five weeks walking this out. Yeah, <clears throat> but that's that's a big that's. That those are fighting words. Well, and all of <laughs> all of you eschatology antichrist lovers, well, he has some pretty harsh words of people who do not believe that Jesus came in full flesh. They are the antichrist, hmm. not some. What is it, Nick, uh, Nikolai? What, whoever the um, whoever the current or whoever the current <laughs> yeah uh, pres- president the or current pre- bad uh, leader in the world yeah. is yeah right <laughs> we've had about Oprah seventeen Oprah. antichrists in my lifetime oh, that have been claimed it oh, yeah <laughs> I found an article um, that my dad had of what is it ninety nine reasons why Jesus will come back in ninety nine and oh I thought it was uh, 89, eighty maybe eighty nine eighty eighty eight yeah. and eighty eight yeah and then, yeah eighty eight and, and eighty nine so he did eighty nine yeah. and eighty nine yeah so he I found that in his made some money off office. that oh I'm sure you, yeah <laughs> <laughs> didn't you work for someone who did that or was that someone else no that wasn't me that was you okay <laughs> um okay so let me uh, clear this out um yes so one of the big things that uh I I like about this is he's constantly uh, he will emphatically state it, but he's constantly it, like I was drawing around. He's constantly doing this thing, circling Gnosticism and making arguments against it all the way through, even though at times he will make emphatic statements. Yeah, he, he does a lot of ifs. Yeah, right. Especially in this first yeah. chapter, there's there's one section that you highlight, and then I think he has like five or seven ifs. Mm-hmm. If you if you do that, then and that's hard for yeah. the for the rules oriented follower because mm-hmm. uh, if I should be either it should be do or don't. Mm-hmm. They you know they want the old Yoda. Well, and this is one of those hard books where. So, like, we, like, our public ministry is based on, um, listen, you, there are, there are no works, there are no trying harder and doing better that will save you. Like, that is simply the love, mercy, and grace of God that does it. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, that's our public ministry. That's, that's what we tell everyone. But then there are these moments in 1 John does it where he's like, and you have to do something. Right. And it's it's those more personal conversations because all of a sudden the people who love performance are like, yeah, I got to do something. <laughs> but it's like, wait, wait, wait. 
remember the, the, the thing is based on mercy, grace, God working through you. And, and, and that means you'll do something like James. It's right. the James. This is, yeah. he, he, I uses... mean, it's that, it's, it's like, Hey, you have to do something, mm-hmm. but know that what you do doesn't get you what you're matters not better. Most. Yeah. You're not better or worse. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, every relationship that, that is valuable on planet earth mm-hmm. has, has that stuff of, they don't love me because I do if it's really love, mm-hmm. but then I want to do. But that's and exactly if that's it. it, and it's earth and humans, how much more this? And then it's written by a guy who, I mean, he, you know, was with Jesus all the mm-hmm. time, which he makes a big deal about at the beginning. Mm-hmm. He's basically like, I was there. I, I not, not only did I see him, I touched him. Yeah. Like, we high fived. So here's the thing <laughs> that very statement when he says, but I touched him is a dig at Gnosticism because Gnosticism says flesh, material, creation is evil. Okay. And so those little digs, he's, like I said, he makes emphatic statements, but then he's constantly circling Gnosticism. So he's writing to the church. Yep. But then he's, but they're obviously had that influence around him. Which is what second John And he knows is. they're going to hear it. Mm-hmm. Whether there's some people going to church that are like trying to get that in there. Yep. And they're yep. going to hear this. And, and so get, he's and get ticked off a little bit oh, or, or yeah. convicted and saved. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Hopefully convicted. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So he uses, uh, you know, there's dark, right? Anything. Uh, or Gnosticism says this. Um, there's light. So this right here, this dark, would be um, material creation. Material. Ah, uh, see, this is now people are going to be able to see immaterial. Is that right? Material. Is there a, a, a I there? Um. So Gnosticism says there's a separation here. Did I spell it right? It looks like immaterial. Immaterial. Oh, there's an e. <laughs> There. I was like, he just wrote it back? There we go. There you go. Uh, so Gnosticism says this is how the world works. Bad, evil, um, and, and kind of the idea is depraved. Uh, mm-hmm. Material stuff is depraved. And this is called enlightened. Mm-hmm. Um, enlightened. E-D-D. Okay. Um, Gnosticism believes this. Anything material is evil. Anything spiritual or more, more kind of the, where Gnosticism gets its yep. word, gnosis, <clears throat> the Greek word, mm-hmm. um, uh, thought, mind, light, enlightened, right? right. Um, so when John, for example, in he goes, uh, what was from the beginning, which he quotes, um, he'll later use in his opening to his gospel of John. Um, what we have heard, so ears, what we have seen with our eyes and what we have looked at and touched with our hands. These three statements immediately a Gnostic would be like, I, <laughs> I don't know because material creation is evil. It's depraved. Okay. So go, go taking Lacey's take. Yeah. What is, what does that mean to me or whatever she, so I, I have two. So I, I, Cause we're, I'm not, I'm not struggling with Gnosticism. And I don't, I can't think of any friends that are like Gnostics here. Right. Even if I know unsaved people. So how does, what does this matter to me? Two, well, I have two thoughts. One, the nature of God. Do we believe God created humans? If no, okay, we're going to have a completely different conversation. If yes, right, I'm talking mm-hmm. to a Christian. Yes, God created humans. Okay, great. Do you have a sinful nature? Well, yeah, that's what the Bible says. Okay. So a good God creates a sinful nature. Well, you start getting into the nature and character of God then. Is he creating depraved humans mm-hmm. or nature? The second way this applies to us, so the first way is a character of God issue. Mm-hmm. The second way is, do I believe that I can do and be who Jesus said I can be empowered by the Holy Spirit? And if I take... Uh, what my design in nature is, is one to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. then yes, I can be. 
if I if I take it as no, I'm a depraved human, and that's not going to happen until heaven. Then again, that's a different conversation that we're going to have. Why all of these emphatic statements of "Hey, you have to be partakers of the light." Okay, so now I'll just say what I would have grown up was: <clears throat> um, we're born sinful, <clears throat> or, or I'll tell you, this, we're we're born whole and free, but we sin really quickly. So then we become sinful. Mm -hmm. So we have we have a, a a minimal amount of time being pure. Yeah. And then we're we're all sinful. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So so why does the take matter if we all become sinful? Uh, um here's here's as opposed to saying depravity. I, I, I get the de I mean I've been in that world. Yeah. Um, right. Right. <laughs> so depravity. <laughs> okay, it's like oh, okay, that's golly, but like, okay, I'm born this way, but then quickly sin. <laughs> um, I think part of it is uh, too many Christians label immaturity as sin. Okay. Um, right? So why? why? Yeah, like why, why would that be the often take that people have? Um, I think because we see, we label... We label what we perceive to be sinful disrespect. Mm -hmm. um, a great example of this is Jesus when he stays behind at the temple when he's 12, 13. I forget mm -hmm. what Luke says. Um, and I, I always use this idea of, okay, so Mary and Joseph, after a few days of looking for Jesus, show up at the temple and see him. And they're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? As a parent... You and I would be like, if our child did that, they were sinning, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I mean, just, I mean, come on. I'd have a lot more words. <laughs> right? And we would label that, that person, that my child sinned because they, they should have known better. Mm -hmm. We had all gone. They should have known better. They should have been with us. And we label that as sin. Now, we know Jesus never sinned. Mm -hmm. So what happens if I label something that my child does rather than immaturity? and we just label it sin, number one, it takes the responsibility off my back as a parent to train, and it just labels it rebellion, <clears throat> then I just pray for my kid's salvation. Mm -hmm. Rather than going, oh, okay, I need, to, I need to do a better job teaching. Right? Personal ownership on, yeah. on another human being. Um, two, I label immaturity sin. It puts an identity on that human that mm -hmm. they that God never designed for them. Okay. Right? So um, my child is learning how to love. And this is the one, oh, I hate this argument so much. I never have to teach my child how to, how to lie. They just do it. I never have to teach my child how to be rebellious. They just do it. And I'm like, okay, you know what else I never had to teach my child how to do? Hug me. You know what else I never had to teach my child how to do? Tell me, Daddy, I love you. I didn't, like, coach them, Daddy, I love you, right? Mm -hmm. So either are they inherently sinful or are they inherently good or are they inherently ne neutral, right? And I, I think that's the thing is when I put on them something that they've just learned and watched and done and right. have no cognitive choice in the matter, um then it goes defaults back to the character of God issue mm -hmm. of, so, okay, let's say we're born sinfully depraved and a baby dies. Where do they go? Usually the, the slightly softened reformed person will go, well, they go to heaven because of a general grace. That's inconsistent with God's law. According to you though, that right. would be an inconsistent walking out of that law. Um, where, I would argue, uh, no, it's based on choice, and it always is based on choice, right? It's it's the uh, Ezekiel eighteen: the soul who sins dies. It's not not everyone dies because everyone's a sinner. Um, and the hard part, like with the verse you you used in Romans, we all fall short of the glory of God. Yep, because we're not God. That is, I don't, to me, I'm like, that's not a statement on humanity. That is a commentary on God that, yeah, we all will fall short of the glory of God because none of us are God. Mm 
-hmm. Right? It's like saying the clay pot that I threw will never amount to the glory that I have. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> it's a pot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think what happens is we cherry pick these verses and create theologies out of them rather than looking at the whole of Scripture and, and, and um, developing in community our thoughts. I don't know. That's I hate cherry picking verses. And that's like right. a pet peeve of mine um like there's one in romans that is all oh always quoted is um because of adam all have sinned mm -hmm. you you know that verse yeah classic reformed verse the very next verse is because of christ all will be saved and so i asked reformed people i'm like oh okay so you're a universalist then right <laughs> well uh, i'm like nope <laughs> Paul is contrasting two equal uh, thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, because of Adam, all have sinned. Great. Because of Jesus, all are made righteous. Or could Paul be talking about a deeper thing? And I think he is. I'm not going to get into the weeds here, though. Um, but no, it's, it's those yeah. we cherry pick stuff. Um, right. Anyways, yeah. So material depraved, immaterial, enlightened. And so John, in his very first statement... I touched, I saw, I heard. Right. Is an immediate affront to yeah. a Gnostic, to to someone who says material is is evil, depraved, dark. Um, and then he uses the contrasting dark and light kind of mm -hmm. throughout the letter to use that. Right. Um, let's see. So he physically experienced him. Okay, verse four, and this is what I want to get at is um he says, Why, why am I writing this? He says uh, these things we write so that our joy or your joy may be complete. These things I've written in these three verses or what I'm about to write? What, everything. Okay. The reason I'm writing you mm -hmm. is so that your joy will be full. It will be fulfilled. It will be complete. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that is something as we read through this, um, if something, if we land on a conclusion that does not, um, bring us joy, then I think we've landed on, or at least have gotten halfway or landed on a wrong conclusion. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so that's, that's the thing, like, cause he's going to get into actions. And I think a lot of us, when we talk about, Hey, you got to love that person. Yeah, but they're unlovable. And God says, yeah, but you have to love them. I often go, this is going to be very painful for me, <laughs> right? <laughs> this will not bring me joy, but that's where, this is where I have to trust. Okay, God, you're commanding me to do something that's going to feel really hard. Right. But John is saying he wrote that for my joy. And he, I mean, his gospel is filled with this, right? right? Your joy will be full. Hey, if you love me and love others like you love me and like I've loved you, your joy will be full. Anything you ask in my name, I will do for you so that your joy will be full. Yeah. Um, but I think we can easily apply that to almost anywhere in life. I go through and I get, I, I take the time to, to get it, to learn a trade, to, to become an apprentice, to build mm -hmm. stuff. And I bang my, uh, my thumbs and I, I get the bad work schedule and, mm -hmm. and I get seven different mentors and some of them are good, some of them aren't and all that stuff. And I become a builder and then I earn an income and I provide for my family, providing for my family and earning a good income. That's, that's joyful. Just yeah. on a human yeah. scale, the stuff I went through. No, I didn't like that. But yeah, I really did like it. Sports, mm -hmm. uh, diet, exercise, mm -hmm. all the stuff. We totally get that. And then we get to the spiritual side of life, and sometimes it's like, yeah. So I think if we just understand what he's saying is how, how God created life to be, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it's, it's so, it's not separate from spiritual. It's like there's a real God to really know, a real Jesus to really know. I touched him. I hung mm -hmm. out with him. I talked to him. He talked to me. He's real. There's ways that, that increase that relationship with him, and there's things that can happen that hinder it. Mm -hmm. And I know the pitfalls. Like I literally know the pitfalls of how to hinder a relationship with the living God walking day to day mm -hmm. with him. So I'm going to help you to walk in the light, live in the light, so that the darkness does not overcome you. Right. And so we have to take really this whole fullness of what he's saying and and the along the way and at the end of it it's joy yep 
And yep. nothing can rob jo- real joy. The the dude, the dude we worship, right? Mm-hmm. He endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Yeah. Right? And I think we forget that as Christians that that okay, I worship a guy who went through the cross not because he wanted to. He did it because there was going to be a joyful outcome. Right. And we think we think that that is pride or selfish to go, all right, there's going to be a reward on the other side of this. Maybe that re- maybe that relationship, if I sacrifice, maybe this relationship will be sa- uh, will be um, reconciled. Maybe if I sacrifice, this will happen. And I don't know. I've, I've talked to some Christians who think if there's if there's any reward for you. It's but, selfish. But it's fine in life. We, uh, I go no, through, I know. You know, football players go through two days in August. Even so they can try to win games. Here's the thing. Even Jesus. Yeah. It doesn't say he endured the cross because he endured the cross. Right. Because he humbled himself. It says he endured the cross for the joy set before him. And that was the reward of He didn't the want the cross. Himself. Oh, yeah. What, like the gar- right? The garden. John right. 24, 44 or something. It... He didn't want to do it. Right. And yet we think if I look if I look for the hopeful outcome, then it's no longer um selfless. Uh, yeah, selfless, right? Yeah. But that's constantly what Jesus does. Hey, you do this, there'll be more joy. I know we're called to be selfless <laughs> and sacrificial and giving and all that, but we're never told you can never think selfless. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. This this is a this is how easily Gnosticism creeps into the church. We think, right? Gnosticism says material gain is mm-hmm. evil, so you need to be separate from it. So there's there's two arms of Gnosticism. Mm-hmm. One says the flesh doesn't matter, so do whatever you want. Right. Which John will address. The other arm of Gnosticism says the flesh is evil, so you need to um, become an ascetic, mm-hmm. which means you separate from the normal and you basically, um, what is it? flog your own body or or like basically beat your body yeah yeah yeah. that's where the catholics get fledged yeah yeah yeah, right um but here's the this is how easily it settles into the church is if you have any um what is it selfish motivation you're like it's not humble yeah and there's a here's the hard part like there's an element to that right right (laughs) but it's 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 to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice because I know I'm going to have a better marriage. Mm-hmm. I know it'll be good for, you know what I mean? Right. And I don't know, I was, I was talking with someone in, what is it called where you do something like selflessly with no motivation of for yourself? Uh, Alt- not cathartic, not altruistic. Altru- altruistic. Thank you. That uh, I, I was listening to someone and they're like, nobody does anything altruistically. There's always a selfish motive to it. And I'm like, that's yeah. a Friends episode. Oh, it was it? Oh, hi. For those who love Friends. <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> um, but no, that's the thing is, is I, I want to dispel the notion that if I benefit from something in some way, then I didn't do it altruistically. And that's not the teaching of Jesus because that, right. I would argue, is actually a Gnostic teaching that you you should so kill your flesh in the way that you get right. nothing from it. And if that's the case, case, we should all be committing suicide. If our flesh is that evil. Yeah. It also feels if it's like that, you're in that intent that that's kind of what you're worshiping. So then there's pride. So then what How? do you do? No. With that? Here's, I mean. Okay. So this gets into, <laughs> this gets into just, just me and you talking. Okay. You guys hold on. Shh, go away. I've actually had this thought of like in, in the conversations I've had with reformed people, it almost seems like they I, idolatrize their own depravity hmm. um, rather than focusing on what is it that God has done and is doing and, and continues to do and will do. It's like I, I heard someone go, you know what, Nate, when I wake up, I'm sinning. I'm like, oh. You like you're a, a bad waker up. You're, ter- 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 you're, you're doing terrible at waking up. Are you like stabbing someone when you wake up? Like, what are you doing? But yeah, it's, it's yeah, this I, idolatrization of their own. And depravity. I just, it's it's like, so are you truly grateful, thankful, and joyful? 
if that's your take, your bend, your look, like how do you live thankful? Yeah. If you're just... You can't. Because it's almost like you despise yourself. Well, and here's the thing. No, 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 no. No. Here's how they do it. it I, I was just thinking, that they do it by thanking God for their salvation. In spite of me being depraved? Yeah. <laughs> and what, is, what does Hebrews talk about? Those who glorify uh, Christ's crucifixion are immature. He, he goes back to, if you're continually landing on the crucifixion mm-hmm. of Jesus... Yeah. You're an immature Christian. Right. He, he calls it the milk of, of theology, mm-hmm. th- th- which it, as, as people who love theology to talk about the, cr- the cross of Christ as an immature, right? Sounds all sorts of wrong, but. <laughs> it, totally. But it, it, I, I think it uses the, the blood of Jesus who, who continually go back to the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, right. It sounds sacrilegious. Yeah. And yet, the, I'm going to default to the Hebrews writer. Like, he says that. It's in there. <laughs> there it is. Um, no, but it, it honestly, Scott, like, that has given me, like, all of these passages have given me and helped me walk through freedom because mm-hmm. all of a sudden, my, here's the thing, like, my outlook on life, if I look at my life as someone who is totally depraved and there's no good and will be no good until Jesus comes back or I die and I'm in heaven and I fly away or whatever it is, that perspective will affect how I live my life out, mm-hmm. right? Um, I use the idea of, you know, my 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 thing, um, you know, the thing that I've been set free from is pornography. If I view myself as a sinner saved by grace, mm-hmm. how am I going to approach temptation to pornography well i'm a sinner yeah and and maybe i'll have grace for this temptation yeah hopefully i'll get lucky (laughs) right (laughs) or if i am as scripture says of more than a conqueror in christ jesus well that gives me a bit of a different outlook on temptation wait i i don't have to give into this Mm -hmm. because i'm not just a conqueror i'm more than a conqueror Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. This is one of the many resources we make available for free at our website, cultivaterelationships.com. Our resources have helped people grow in their relationship with God and others. Uh, We've seen people set free from uncontrollable anger and paralyzing fear. We've witnessed estranged family members be reunited after working through our freedom booklet. We've helped people build healthy relationship and coping habits through our coaching videos. And all of these resources are made available for free because of the generous support of people like you. If you would like to become a partner, please visit cultivaterelationships.com slash support. Now, I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. So tell me this. So in, in, when you were living in your reformed mentality, oh. <laughs> do you believe you were, in essence, uh, influenced or struggling with Gnosticism as it, as it is relevant today? Um, I mean, I didn't, like, wake up going, I'm struggling with Gnosticism. Right. I think as I've walked this, like, walked this out, I have become, number one, like, I look at the old Nate and I'm just like, dude... <laughs> He was funny. <laughs> in so mean. Well, you know what's funny, Scott, is is I, I've seen this pattern in my life. The more I give into temptation, mm-hmm. the more judgmental I also become. Oh yeah. It's a it's yeah. this weird backwards thing where you would think the more I give into temptation, the more gracious I would be. Like, oh man, right. I'm failing. I, I understand. No, it's the exact opposite. The more free I become, the more I'm like, oh, man, come <laughs> here. I understand. It's you, okay. Yeah, right? It's, but it's, it's, it is. It's, it's yeah. this weird pattern. So he writes uh, that our joy may be made complete. Yeah. Where, where was your joy in the midst of that <laughs> theology reformed struggle of don't sin, don't sin, don't sin? I, or whatever. I was fundamental without the fun. <laughs> All right, like that's so a dumb mental man. No, that's what reformers are. No, uh, but no, there's no joy in it. And I think you have to have this facade of joy. Like, I'm the most joyful person, yeah. brother. <sighs> it's like, hey, tell your face. 
Yeah. If you're that uh, joyful, I rejoice in the future of no sin in heaven. And that's the thing. You, you, I, I personally believe you have to default to a joy that you can't experience in this life, and hopefully you will in the next. I think as a reformed person, that's you. <laughs> you have to land there. And yet, once again, you read through Acts. How many times? People are being persecuted. Things are happening. Stuff's not working out. And they constantly talk about, it seems like, not just like a ethereal joy, mm-hmm. like a very emotional joy. Yeah. Like it, like a tangible joy. I mean, was it, who are the two that were flogged and beaten and they, they walked out and they're like, we got beaten for Jesus. Which ones? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's like, we got, we just got beaten I know. because, because we're like Jesus followers. Yeah. Like, how cool is that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> You're a psycho. <laughs> You're, what is it, ma- masochist or sadist? What one likes pain? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, for the joy. Let's see, I write this so your joy will be complete. And then it gets into this soliloquy about light. Oh, here's all the ifs. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, so this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness. Okay. So he's, he's separating these things out now. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, God light. Now, he just came off of Jesus being flesh. Mm-hmm. And so again, this very subtle dig at Gnosticism, Jesus is God. There is no darkness in God. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, again, it's this subtle. Right. Um, if, verse six, if we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness... So this is where he's talking about the Gnosticism that says, uh, I can do whatever I want mm-hmm. because flesh doesn't matter anyways. Right. I'm enlightened now. Um, uh, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Dude, this is a hard one. Because yeah. it, it, notice the progression. Uh, if we walk in the light, so if my behavior is in agreement with who God is, mm-hmm. then I have fellowship with others. Then the blood of Jesus cleanses me. Yeah. So that's that sounds like a big <laughs> mandate. Yeah. So like how? How? Like I, what? You know, it, how in the world? This goes, I think it goes, you know, the whole chicken egg concept Mm -hmm. i think looking at it in marriage um you you can look at it this way when i sacrifice when i do the things that i know are beneficial to my marriage beneficial to my Mm -hmm. wife um then my marriage is cleansed it's pure and yet it, it i don't know it's this hard thing of well what comes first is it jesus cleansing me or is it me walking in him Right. And John's answer is, yep. <laughs> no, 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 no. What one, what one comes first? Because theologically, I need to put this in a box. That way I can methodize mm-hmm. it and tell someone else how to do it. Right. What comes first? Me being cleansed or me walking in him? Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on. That's not a systematic theology. Right. I would like it to be. <laughs> True. Um, yeah. So, and that's the thing. Like, there's no... This is the hard part, Scott, that Nate Steele, you know, a decade ago, I had to have all the answers. I need to systematically work this out through scripture. Mm -hmm. And man, dude, again, the older I get, the more, more I walk in freedom, the less I care about systematic theology. And yet I would argue, I think the clearer I see scripture, it's this weird, it's this backwards weird Mm -hmm. thing that... The Nate Steele who needed to splice all the Greek words and mix them up with the Hebrew verb and make sure they all were congruent from old to new. The more I'm like, just love and allow yourself to be loved and it'll work out. Yeah. The more I'm looking through scripture going, oh my goodness, I get how this verse passage. Well, I think it's, it's just, I can, wa- I can live in the grace given. Mm-hmm. And then if, I, if I'm just... Loving and living in that grace given, I'm I'm naturally gonna love to mm-hmm. give that. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, he's so compassionate towards me in my fears or my questions or my 
struggles, mm-hmm. uh, with my ups and downs, I can I can be compassionate to people. I can yeah. I see them and I'm like it's okay. And let's not let's not deal with that. Let's just love them and let that love uh, begin to hone and shape them. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to uh, hey, I see these seventeen <clears throat> things. Yeah. And let me tell you about the 17 things. Yeah. And let me tell you how to fix the 17 things. And if I just show grace and <laughs> compassion, they're probably going to be like, hey, I've got I've got eight things I really need you to help. And you know, I know there's 17. Yeah. <laughs> but man, you want me to help you with those eight? Yeah. Awesome. I love yeah. relationship. And then they're like, hey, there's nine more. I'm like, really? <laughs> well, that's awesome of you to see You're that. You're right. Right. But I think that's where... So Nate Steele, a decade ago, I loved being the Holy Spirit in people's life. Right? You didn't care much about the Holy Spirit, though. <laughs> the Spirit-filled, the Spirit-led life, I guess. <laughs> right. No, but it, like, I loved being the convictor. Right. Right? And now, I could care less about, number one, I don't want the responsibility. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work. But it's just like, <laughs> But then the other part of it is genuinely, I believe and know a God who can be far more thorough in their life than Nate Steele can. Yeah. So I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you loved being the convictor. Oh. How many people. That's what brought me joy. Yeah. So how many people really let you help them move into becoming truly like Jesus versus now when you, you do, but you don't really give a rip versus <laughs> right. now, how many people do? You know. Ask you to just help them. I, hold on. I'll, I'll say it this way. I, because we led ministries right. back then. Um, and I think, I, I think this is where the grace of God, uh, overcame Nate Steele, where people, so, all of you from 10 years ago, you're not <laughs> law. It, it counts still. <laughs> Cody, I'm I know not. you're listening. All right. <laughs> I was thinking of Cody. <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think this is where the, like the grace of God was like, okay, Nate, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do this in spite. But now don't you just see that it just naturally, they well, I, the, and they ask and they just, they, and they, and you see them, they'll get free from being in relationship with you without you saying anything to them. I, just because yeah. they learned, yeah. they learn to love and be gracious and be compassionate and just be thankful for life in Jesus and love that, that joy is natural. Mm-hmm. And they begin to change. And then they're like, hey, how can I do this? Well, like, it, or, or like, how can I do this like you did? And you're like, I, I didn't really help you yeah, like yeah. you're thinking, but awesome. Okay. I'll take the credit. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was, it's uh, actually recently had a friend of mine who, you know, he was, he was struggling with something and he's like, ah, oh, you know what? I should call Nate and, and, and ask him. And, and then all of a sudden, like I heard Nate's voice going, well, what's the Holy Spirit asking you to do? And so then he prayed and asked the Holy Spirit <laughs> and, and walked that out. But he was relaying back to me this story. <laughs> and here's the thing. Nate Steele today rejoices in that because it was a Holy Spirit led response that got him mm-hmm. to, to an- his answer. Yeah. Not the Nate Steele response. Right. And I would argue back then it may have been a biblical response, but it was a Nate Steele response right. by the people that I was walking and helping. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, that's the thing is I feel like I need a coffee mug because I, today I'm, I'm constantly telling people, well, what's the Holy Spirit asking you to do? Mm-hmm. What's the Holy Spirit leading you to do? Whereas back then it was, well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you the verse and I have the verse and I'll tell you the verse. Mm-hmm. And then that way, if you're still confused, you can call me your guru uh, and I'll find it for you. Mm-hmm. Um, which part of, part of that brought me joy because then it was about me, <laughs> right? I know the yeah. answers. I have the, um, but yeah, it's, it, so um, I th- that's, that's what I'm saying is John's mess in first John and then playing out in second and then third John. Mm-hmm. Oh my, my computer is leaving. Um, I, that is what I enjoy today is seeing mess being worked out. Whereas before I didn't like mess. Right. And, um, so let's keep reading here. If we, Oh, this is, so this is funny though. Uh, verse 7, I'm going to go back there real quick. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 8, if we say we have no sin, and all the reformers are like, yeah, 
<laughs> we, we, uh, oh, I lost it now. We are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. So there's three ways I have no sin, I think can work itself out. Um, I, one of the way, where did I put this? I put it somewhere. One, oh, uh, did I put it here? Okay. We, we deflect sin like, oh, it wasn't that bad or. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we deflect it or we sanitize it like as a Christian. Right. We sanitize our story. <clears throat> and, you know, brother, I just struggled with pride and then I went to the cross. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't I don't have to talk about the nitty gritty of the pornography the of journey, the journey through. Yeah. Right. To... The, the withdrawal from relationship, the mm -hmm. um, self gratification of over here and, and, and not with my wife, like some of these. Right. Messy things. So I think one way we say I have no sin is I sanitize my story. Hmm. Um, and I think one other way is that we justify it. Well, I had to do that. Like, I mean, at least I'm not as bad as my dad. I mean, my right. dad responded this way. Now, at least I did at least two, two things better than him. Right. Um, and then and then obviously, like, kind of the worst way is we reject it. Like, I don't need Jesus. Right. That's kind of like. Yeah. All the non-Christians, like, that's that. And then every Christian is like, yeah, see, it's only non-Christians who do that. I'm like, no, as a Christian, uh, I remember the moment I did not want to be appropriately vulnerable in front of people. And I genuinely believe in, the, in that moment, it's, <clears throat> I have no sin. Hmm. Because I want to sanitize my story so, does it, so it's not as bad. Yeah, uh, I think... I mean, in this, especially in this section five through nine, I think he is being so without saying you have to be real and vulnerable and open mm -hmm. and share your life mm -hmm. and also love listening to someone's yep. life. I, I think he's screaming vulnerability yeah. and relationship here. It is. Well, and it's what is repeated in John three sixteen. We love that, right? Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world, he gave his only mm -hmm. begotten son. Actually, I want to read it because... Um, it delves right into that. So John three sixteen, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Okay. Mm -hmm. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world. What? All the reformers. <laughs> <laughs> but the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe in him is judged already. So they're judged on their own actions. That's like a right. whole thing throughout the old... Old Testament that mm -hmm. God judges someone on their basis of their knowledge. And that's what uh, Romans one Paul's argument is, is God doesn't judge you based on his character. He judges you based on your own character, mm -hmm. based on the truth that you hold is what God will judge you on. Not right. even against him. Right. It's against yourself. Um, uh, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son, God, this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and the men loved the darkness rather than the light for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But he who practices truth, so the person who practices truth, mm -hmm. all right, that's who he's, he's addressing, comes to the light. So the person who is Already, already practicing truth right. is the person who is willing to be vulnerable. Right. So he's not saying comes to the, the light that is Jesus and kneels at his feet. No. It is the person who is willing. He's saying he comes and he just spread, He just says, this is my stuff. This is, all, yep. this is my life, and, guys, and girls, yeah. fa fa community. Yep. This is and John's argument is, oh, you're already walking in the light. No, no, no. I just, I literally just confessed everything that I've been doing. Yep. Dude, you're in the light, man. You're like, right. no, I, like literally this morning, this is what I did. Dude, you're already there. Mm -hmm. But I think like how we grew up, it would be like, oh, good. Finally, we can start moving toward the light. Right. That Like to me, like uh, the, the, the judgy Nate. <laughs> I, like, this is a hard thing because it's like, okay, according to this passage, then someone who, who I, I, Nate Steele, would look at their life and go, oh, man, they have so far to go. What John is saying is they already arrived. <laughs> They've already, that's it. They're in the light, mm -hmm. period. Um, 
but he who practices truth, right? The one who practices truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifest as having been wrought by God. But I did a bunch of bad things. Yeah, and that whole action of coming to the light and exposing it, mm-hmm. that's wrought by God. Like, that's the thing that was brought forth by God. Mm-hmm. Your vulnerability is, is it. Yeah. Anyways, it, hmm. that one bugged me. That one <laughs> bugged me. Um, so then it says, uh, so I'm in back verse in first John. Yeah, verse 9. Um, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive mm-hmm. us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right? Like, that's exactly what we just read in, mm-hmm. in his gospel. Right. The exposure, the coming to the light. Um, verse, where did I go? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ten. Ten. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So again, that could be justification. That could be the sanitizing. That could be Mm -hmm. justifying, the deflecting, the rejecting, all of that. Um, And then he says this. This is a parenthetical uh, in the Greek. Mm -hmm. It's parenthetical. He goes, hey, my little children, I'm writing these things so that you may not sin. (laughs) Like parenthetical. (laughs) And then he goes, end of parenthetical, he goes, and if anyone sins. So I think, you know, the the reformer, at least what I would, what I used to say was, uh, I think they mean when, uh, when someone sins. That's not the Greek word. (laughs) It's if. It is, it is something that you have to choose. It is a word that means you have to choose something. Mm -hmm. Um, If you sin... We have an advocate with mm-hmm. the Father. And I, this whole letter is cloaked in grace with incredibly hard words for religious people. Yeah. That's what's funny. Like those of us who walk in freedom and desire walking in freedom, and maybe you're someone who's struggling and you're like, man, I am not free. It's cloaked in grace, right? Man, you have an advocate. And then those of us who are judgy and love to condemn people, then th- I feel like this is yelling at me. <laughs> this is a mean letter, you know? Um Let's see, and if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not only ours, but for those of the whole world. Hmm. Everyone. Yeah. Done. Yes. That's, do you have any thoughts? Like, what, what do you got? Well, I mean, <laughs> like when, when, we, when we teach, you know, you, you have some questions. And, and I, you know, when I, when I think, and when I read this, it's like he, He's there's so much grace there because mm-hmm. he's saying, you know, you, you know, you can live free from sin, and and if, if and if you don't, and on that day that week, there's grace from a gracious, compassionate advocate who's already done the work. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. There, there's grace, but it's already been done. He's like he's not, he doesn't have to make it happen for you. He's already done it. He's just gonna he's gonna make sure you get it. Yeah, yeah. If you if you if you're struggling here, um, but then I think. Like these questions here, you know, what, and, and what stood out to me was like situation. What, what situation is currently making, ch- making it challenging for you to feel joy? Cause I just, I just, over the past year of my life, just that joy, the joy of Jesus, just the understanding of, of what it means to live in that. Like we can just above the fray of, of life, of culture, of society, of what COVID did, mm-hmm. what a president is doing, what what a job makes happen, what a relationship is causing, all that stuff. We can live above the fray truly, mm-hmm. but it, only with if you're living in the joy of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So what is what is making it challenging for me to to not just feel the joy, but truly live in that joy. I think that's a good question to ask, to go, okay, what what is it? And I, I might know, but I, I might be like, I don't think I'm living in the joy of Jesus. So Jesus, I, I don't know why, but I certainly don't think this is joy, like in a, in an over overcoming way. So, so Holy Spirit, you're supposed to be my counselor. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you are, <laughs> but you, th- that's your role. So can you show me what, like, I don't know. If I know, I get to do something with it mm-hmm. or not. Uh, a lot of ifs, right? <laughs> uh, if you choose to do something with it. But like, if I don't know, mm-hmm. he will show me. Mm-hmm. Like, I have no doubt. So we have to ask that question. 
what, what is making it challenging? So I do I do one of two things. Either I look at the areas that I have joy in my life mm-hmm. and I go, no, no, I have joy. And I dismiss the other areas, <laughs> right? I have joy over here. It's great. Tell, tell me about your disease. I am doing my therapies and I'm joyful that I have the provision for my therapies. You know, like. Yeah. Right. So I dismiss. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, and, and I didn't I didn't put it in the question, but I think. Um, just recognizing part of it, I can affirm areas in my life where I don't have joy while celebrating areas that I do. Right. And so it's not, I, I guess, like in the question, in the question, I don't want people to be like, oh, I I only have to not have joy to answer this question. Like every mm-hmm. part of my life has to be not joy. It's right. like, no, 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 no. Hey, there's areas that we can celebrate. Man, where are the areas that we're struggling? Right. And don't dismiss one for the other. Um yeah, and I think that's where the second question, <laughs> it does a lot because it's like, what role are you playing in contributing to the lack of it? Right. Which oh. then, because like if you say, hey, what person or situation is is making it challenging? And, and, and it can be totally real, but I can be like, yeah, that person, that person in this situation. So those. Yeah. But if then I have to go, what role am I playing in contributing to it? I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Why are you blaming me, Nate? Like, okay. why are you, you know, why, this, why are you, hey, you're getting, so now this, you're, you're blaming me. Right. <laughs> this reminds, okay, kind of a tangent, but not. So I like watching uh, 48 Hours, uh, Dateline, the the murder mysteries, oh, Forensic Files, right? Oh, I love them. I, I, I have Just watched. give me Jack Reacher. Over, over the course of Christmas <laughs> break, hours. Okay. <laughs> um. There was one I was watching, and it's funny. They're interviewing him. Like, they know he did it. He knows he's, he did it. Like, they're, they're in this moment. He's arrested, right? And they're asking him, well, what about this one? He's like, well, I thought she swore at me, so I punched her. And they're like, but she was choked. He's like, yeah, and then I choked her. But it all started out because I thought she swore at me. And, like, every murder victim is a serial killer. Every murder victim, he had an excuse as to why he did it. Mm-hmm. They did this, or I thought they did this, or they looked at me this way. <laughs> and it, it's to your point, though. It's like, you're a murderer, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> you murdered them. So that's what the question's getting to is it's easy for me to blame. It's easy for me to be like, well, it's their fault that I did this. It's their fault I responded this way. It's their fault that... Um, Okay, let's pretend it's 99% their fault. Mm-hmm. What's your one? Like, what's your 1%? Right. You know, what's the area that you, eh, there's ownership there. Um, and I think that's what he is talking about in First John is, hey, so you're saying you have no responsibility, or as he would say, mm-hmm. you have no sin. You have no sin in this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and that's what I mean by sanitizing or justifying it. Right. All of that. <clears throat> um, the area for me and I like, uh, I didn't realize, I, I like how you brought it up earlier, dealing with Thanksgiving, and then we do have it in the application. But it's, to me, for Nate Steele, I would say 99 out of 100 times that I'm struggling with something, mm-hmm. it is as a result of me not giving God the credit, praise, Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. That he deserves in a different in a, in an area of my life. Yeah. Um, and that being said, ninety nine out of a hundred times that, um, uh, I'm depressed. I'm struggling. Being thankful is the spiritual weapon that gets mm-hmm. me out of that. Yeah. It it I it like I tell people I'm like hey. When's the last time you've given thanks? And they're like, what does that have to do with this? I'm like, I, I understand. <laughs> Trust me. I, I know. Your question answers the question. Yeah. Oh, your answer answers it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, but it's, it's like, will you trust me? Will you find three things to be thankful for? Mm-hmm. Okay, will you do that again tomorrow morning? Will you do that again the next morning? Three different things. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to like what you and I 
teach dealing with forgiveness and the Thanksgiving part of it. Right. Is hey, don't. Don't be like, hey, thank f- thank you for the blue clouds, <laughs> the, the wonderful sky today. Right. Go, no, no, no. What, what in the circumstance can you be thankful for? Is there anything? Is there anything? Yeah, and I you? think when you get even what might seem pithy or weird in Thanksgiving, it begins. You you begin to think. It's like, thank you, Lord, that I that you didn't let me punch him. Yeah. I mean, I really appreciate that, Lord, because that could have gone sideways, and I got mm-hmm. kids. Thank you that, um, man, he didn't punch me because he's bigger than me. <laughs> yeah, but you just begin to go, okay, real life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you just, and I mean, I was talking to somebody uh, about a week and a half ago, and and it caused me to, to you know, show something, write something on Facebook as I'm help, you know, I just kind of write a, a general, real easy kind of daily thing for 21 mm-hmm. days of prayer. But, and I was like, hey, they were struggling. And I said, hey, can you, can you tell me, can you just take time today, thank God for five things in your life, and then can you just text them to me when you're mm-hmm. done? It might take you all day to get to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and it was like eight hours later, and I was like, sorry, Pastor Scott. Uh, I I think I thanked him for 80 things oh, wow. as I started. Here's yeah. here's my first five, and they they were... <laughs> They were sadly scary and like, wow. But to know that he went on a tangent <coughs> yeah, in a yeah, good way, yeah. 75 more. Yeah. I th- it, it's, it's addicting in a healthy way. And again, the thankful heart doesn't allow a lot of room for bitterness, if any. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and ought and yeah buts and finger pointing. And I would even say, man, mm-hmm. if you're struggling with depression... This is one of the biggest things that, uh, one, uh, I'll say one of the one of the th- principles or, or habits I built in my life. If you're struggling with depression, every night, end your night journaling yeah. five things you're thankful for from the day. Mm-hmm. Um, it helps you to. Th- it begins a habit of th- of remembering them during the day because yeah certainly yep. will or looking for it yeah or and you're like ooh I've got to write that down mm-hmm. tonight and it's a great mm-hmm. thing to- because all all depression is um, outside of I'll say chemical imbalance okay I'm gonna give a caveat there right. um, for Nate Steele <laughs> all depression is is me focusing all the on all the ways that life is unjust or unfair mm-hmm. that's it. That's all. Yeah. Um, and I'm really good at that. <laughs> and I'd say this in my history of working with people, and even when I've struggled through the depression, I didn't think I had because I was too good for depression. Oh, well, yeah. Of course. But then when I finally couldn't run anymore, I fell. Well, Scott, you had no sin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I think depression is the easiest life struggle to get out of and the hardest. Like, it's got the easiest yeah. steps, but it's the hardest to take the first yeah. half step. Yeah, and it's an interesting. It is a such a wicked, vile, spiritual warfare thing of the enemy. Yeah, uh, and and he, and, and yet the easiest thing to step out of if you'll just. And again, it's I don't doing doesn't get it, but doing gets mm-hmm. it there. I, uh, so one of our favorite passages, Second mm-hmm. Chronicles twenty. So this is a mm-hmm. a physical example of what I think spiritual warfare is yeah um you have three enemies coming at uh israel um they're surrounded like they're they're done they're essentially yeah, it's over until legitimately like, except for the killing it's over yeah <laughs> legitimately they're they're out um and i love number one the honesty uh their prayer was we don't know what to do <laughs> god yeah all we can do is come before you and what, what it says is, then they gathered their children, so they came to God in families. Right. And they sing the most popular worship song of the day, <laughs> give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Mm-hmm. His faithful love, his, his uh, yeah, his faithful love endures forever. Right. So it was a, it was a song, a worship song of mm-hmm. thanksgiving. And then the enemy defeats themselves. I know. <laughs> it's such a bizarre. But I, I use that as the physical example of I don't understand what Thanksgiving does. I don't. But it does something. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to do it. Right. I, I'm gonna, it does something spiritually uh, against my enemy who would love nothing more than me to be depressed. Yeah. So, man, I recommend doing that. And if I'm really, truly, like, 
if I'm not just thankful in, in made up words or made up <laughs> things, religiosity, then I'm just really thankful for stuff. It keeps me, it, it, it magnifies the one who is the light. Mm -hmm. It keeps me totally in the light. It keeps me vulnerable. Yeah. Cause I'm, people are like, man, Scott, what are you thankful for? Mm -hmm. And so all the stuff John's talking about, a thankful heart keeps us there. A thankful, yeah. thankful words, actions, reality keeps yep. us there. And in the darkness, has no place. Yeah. Um, one last thing I want to get into the weeds of for the podcast and whether or not we get it, it get to it on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to at least do it on, on the podcast because I don't think I have this as a resource anywhere on our website anywhere. So I wanted to, propitiation. Oh, I love that word. Yeah. My so, favorite $10 word. Oh, I love it. It's an easy one. Okay, so we have, let me let me do it this way. It? <laughs> we'll see. We're all waiting. So <laughs> Pins and needles for here. Nate to spell. Okay. Oh, that's a better way so to spell So we have it. a sin. Like a sin <laughs> thing happens between two people, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, an offense. Mm -hmm. um, over here, you have the off uh, uh, offendee. Is that the word? Offendee? Uh, the one who got offended? Yeah. Yeah. Offend e. Too easy. Okay. What is their responsibility toward this sin? Scott. Forgiveness. Okay. Good. Yep. <laughs> if you said anything else, I'd be like, hey, we're going to do a different... Uh, forgive. Okay. Uh, and then the, the offender. Offender. Uh, and what is their responsibility? Repentance, ownership. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do repent, but there is there's so much in that which we have a ton of resources right. on. Right. Reconciliation, okay. rest of yeah, all yeah. those things. Yeah. Okay. So what uh, and, and to forgive someone does not require the offender to repent, right? And right. The one who repents does not require, require forgiveness. This is this is your half of the equation, mm -hmm. whatever you follow. Okay. Um, and when when these two come together, uh, what is this space called? Reconciliation? Yeah. Yep. Recon. So things have been made right. Right. Yes. Relationally. Now, the the space of these two coming together. Um, the, so oftentimes when, when a sin happens, um, there is hurt, there's there's kind of an ill will toward mm -hmm. toward the other. And what Jesus says is he's the propitiation or the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. um, so propitiation in the New Testament, which is Greek, is the same word as mercy seat right. in Hebrew. Um, and we get that from the Greek translation of the, the Septuagint. Mm -hmm. um, well, what's interesting is that's called a, a gift. It uh, I have it somewhere in my notes. It is the... <clears throat> um, did I write it? <coughs> It's, it's called the reconciling gift. Hmm. So, for example, Scott, let's say I sinned against you and I bake you a, a cake. Okay. There. Sakatumi cake. That's yeah. my favorite. Sakatumi. What is that? Oh, it's like a, it's like a vanilla cake, yellow cake with uh, swirls of cinnamon in there. And it's done in a bunt pan. It's a good German thing. You can do the icing if you want. You can make a chocolate sakatumi. Okay, so uh, I grew up just so look, my belly would love those. I make a I make a German socket to me cake, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and let let's say let's say I, I bake it for you, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes some time sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I bake it for you and and I give it to you. Um I give it to you in your office, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's your office. All right. This whole thing right here is is propitiation. Eation. So your that cake is is a propitiation. Mm -hmm. The office space in which reconciliation happens mm -hmm. is called propitiation. Like it's it's all of these concepts right. together. So the cross is propitiation. In the Old Testament, it would be the mercy seat or or where sacrifices would be offered. Mm -hmm. It's it is the propitiation <clears throat> space. Um, so, anyways, to break this big ten dollar word down, all it is. It, this is not also, this cake is not, um, 
um, what is it when you pay someone back, like what you owe? Uh, re- uh, restitution. Restitution. Right. This is not restitution. Mm-hmm. All this is, is because I've offended you, I I want to... I want to make you happy with something you love. Exactly. That I that I took time to make happen. And, and hopefully it will it will provide an opportunity for us to talk, to have the reconciling conversation. Right. That's all it is. And so I think just to break down this big idea word of propitiation, mm-hmm. he, he basically, between, between God and us, this is why he's called the mediator. Mm-hmm. He's the propitiation. He's the mediating gift on our behalf. Right. We didn't even bake the cake. Right. He's the cake. <laughs> <laughs> he represents himself before the father saying, hey, look at me. Look at me. Don't look at them. Look at me. And forgive them. And so it's, so that it's. That's good. Yeah. So that's, like I said, I just wanted to break that down um, because I don't know if we'll get to it on, on Wednesday. I really want a cake right now. <laughs> Dude, that, it's called a. Sock it to me. Sock it to me. Ger- Sometimes Germans can nail some things like really well. Cars, some beer, uh, you know, uh, Christmas. They brought Christmas and trees and then cakes. <laughs> Atrocities. We're terrible at trying to take over the world. We just need to no. make cakes. <laughs> yes, we're okay. not good at world domination, but we're good at cakes. <laughs> we're really good and at sausage. And sausage. And beer. See? And Mercedes. So. I do like Volkswagens. German. I know. Yeah. All right. That's all. <laughs> uh, dude, thank you. Yeah. That was awesome. Fun. Good. All right. Um, do we usually pray at the no, end of these? We haven't yet. Okay. Well, goodbye. No. <laughs> uh, I'll pray. I'll pray. Um, God, thank you so much for this uh, time. And, and I do ask uh, amidst all of our uh, talking <laughs> that somewhere in there you would get glory and that um, um, your spirit would have ministered and be ministering to, to people, especially, man, those of us who struggle with religion and, and judging and, and legalism and methodizing mm-hmm. Man, Holy Spirit, get a hold of our heart that we would be free. And for those of us who are just struggling with darkness and sin, you are light. In the very act of coming to you immediately is justifying. Um, That vulnerability, that exposure of our heart and our deeds, um, that immediately is 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 justified in you. And so I thank you um, and I pray for anyone listening and everyone listening uh, that you would just be with them, bless them. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Dude, thank you, Scott. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.